Hello everyone, this is Greg from Paris, France. Uh, back for some kind of usual annual uh, challenge uh, because I was recently challenged by uh, Andrew from Australia from Prestige Liquids WW channel. I will put a link below to his channel and to his own video as he was challenged by a channel I think on Reddit, which I don't know at all. Um, and this is a challenge uh, which occurs every year. You will find a video in my channel of last year's <laughs> challenge from the same, not remember if it was Andrew, but uh, most probably Andrew or someone just bef after him uh, to continue the challenge. Uh, Andrew will put a whole list uh, little by little of the other channels um, which follows this challenge so please head over to his channel to follow if you are interested by the theme uh, and I have something in my glass also uh, for my uh, I think it's US and Canada I'm not 100% sure it's not a tradition here in Europe at least continental so uh, happy Thanksgiving for those who are there uh, on in those countries celebrating that uh, you will see in a minute what is this uh, drum. This is the only drum I will drink today in the video because I intend to do a short video. Yeah, I know, almost impossible here, but we'll try. Uh, this challenge has five parts, five uh, whiskey picks. Um, like I said to Andrew, to be 100% uh, honest with you, I am not super excited of the categories. I like the idea of the uh, uh, you you only need five whiskies. Of course, for me, it's not for the rest of my life because I need more choice. <laughs> uh, but I played the game. There are five categories. Daily drinker, impress your guest, something to mix, Friday night pour and special occasion whiskey. Uh, like I answered to, to Andrew, uh, because uh, we dialogue uh, in private a lot. There are three categories there for me, which are, to be honest as well, interchangeable. Because it will be whiskies that s stand up from the others. So impress your guest, Friday night pour and special occasion whiskey. For me, it's almost the same. It's just a question of rarity of the different whiskies compared to the others. Uh, also, I don't drink a uh, whiskey or alcohol every day, so I don't like the idea of a daily drinker. So I will put this for daily drinker, uh, and also Friday night pour. I don't especially pick a special drum on uh, Friday night, but I thought about that and uh, I said, okay, let's give some answers and try also not to replicate last year's. Uh, last year it was the same year I, I wonder it was the same year anyway it was a month months ago uh, but you know me I like to do things also my way and I like also to uh, give you another uh, perspective or another alternative so after I did the official challenge I will give you my take on that uh, you only need five bottles uh, five whiskies um, on my side right so i will put a short timing um, first which is only about when does the first challenge starts and when does the second start and then i will put more details if i can if i have enough room because uh, the place uh, on the room in uh, the comment the description is limited uh, and also i want to keep a bit of surprise so i'm not sure to disclose everything every detail about the whiskies but you will find a lot of details previously on my website or on my um, youtube channel or uh, also now instagram a lot of things are now posted in my instagram because i do for at the moment i will i want work on the website because there are some technical issues still so the Instagram is a kind of backup uh, of it. Right, enough blah blah, and uh, let's go to the official list. So, for daily drinker, I decided to choose something that was not my last year's choice or the obvious choice that is for me, Glen Elgin. Uh, Glen Elgin, <laughs> this tree that does exist, and that's uh, interesting as well. But Glen Murray Elgin Classic, but instead, I pick something that's quite cheap and 
quite nice and um, a regular sipper let's say instead of a daily uh, this is the old packaging uh, of the Glen uh, not Glen it used to be called and there's still some expressions called the Devron uh, Glen Devron I did had uh, earlier on the Glen Devron 15 years old it's long gone now I replaced it by the new range that uh, was released in 2015 so the Devron 10 the Devron uh, 12 and the Devron 18 which is alas discontinued the last one um, so this is the rebranding with the uh, extremely successful and uh, praiseable uh, design agency stranger and stranger which uh, works usually on compass box uh, for a decade uh, or so and uh, for all the brands from uh, Bacardi whiskey companies so the, the John Dewar's blend and uh, the distilleries which belong to the same group so we have uh, Macduff, the Devron is uh, the expression from Macduff Distillery. Uh, they have ro uh, Royal Brackla. Ma so Macduff, Royal Brackla, they have uh, Aberfeldy. Uh, and I hadn't prepared this, so what else do they have? Uh, Craig Alaki and Altmore, Oof. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so, so it comes with a very nice tube as well. It's a distillery that's on the, on the. If you see here, close to the space side, let my finger there. So it's a coastal after space side, so Eastern Highlands distillery. This is the close to the sea, so they did a nice tube. Uh, honestly, for something which is around twenty-three euros here. This is quite a luxury. This is uh, the glass is a bit tainted. There's a beautiful cork there. You can see it's uh, quite awesome. Uh, it's just an old style, a, very, a bit heavy glass bottle. And I guess this is why they have been changing recently for the bad, in my opinion, to something way more cheesy and I don't like the description of the aromas because I like to be free of discover and think what I uh, want of this uh, also it is colored of course and chill filtered but and the, the box is particularly for me ugly and cheap looking I'm sorry guys uh, so I'm not happy about that at all yeah, I bought it as a backup bottle yesterday, so that's why I'm using that sanitizer. Uh, and to uh, to be completely clear, uh, when this will be finished, the level is low, because I enjoy it. I will put the content of the new bottle there and drop the new bottle and, and the packaging, because... Ugh. Now... This is uh, uh, the whiskey itself. Uh, I did retaste it. I have it in my glass. So, yeah, there's a bit of color. It's only 10 years old. The mix of cask, I'm not sure about it. Um, is some bourbon. If it's a little sherry, uh, I think the, the, the bourbon is, is in majority. Uh, the nose is nice. Uh, you can feel, I know it's subjective, you can feel the, uh, some creaminess already on the nose. There's something oily despite the chill filtration uh, on the palate as well. Slangeva. Mm, lovely. And this goes uh, also, sorry, on nice very well. This is creamy, a bit oily. This has a lots of different apples in, in there, fresh apples of different kinds, and also baked apples. It has some caramel, that's true. What did they say else? Creamy oak. A creamy oak for me doesn't make sense, but <laughs> uh, let's say creamy vanilla, I would rather say, with um, an array of citrus fruit, but it's a second ground. Yeah, some dried herbs and some sweet spices maybe 
some nutmeg I'm not sure but ginger but tiny notes it's super balanced drum and for a 40 percenter I think it's it's a lovely drum so that's my first choice as a daily drinker uh, if you cannot find this I do recommend the 12 that's a bit more oomph as well um, I still have the uh, the old packaging I recommend a lot the 18 unfortunately you might struggle to find it I will do full review of the three Devrons I, I have uh, as soon as possible but for now uh, no no advertising <laughs> um, second second is impress your guest how do we, I will impress them uh, what I like to do is uh, make my guest uh, try uh, whiskies blind it's always interesting to see how people can assess the whiskey and also what did they get from it without prejudice without knowing the brand etc or if they don't know it uh, having to put some ideas on it of what it could be no and uh, I picked a fantastic whiskey I had thanks to my friend Frederick over to Sweden so this is a closed distillery this is not the official tube but it's a tube I make because I need to have protection and I wrote a whole story over there so you can see it was a uh, Titan was the name of the distillery it's a single cask uh, Swedish single malt whiskey from the art collection Bergslagen is the name of the whiskey but it's not the name of the distillery uh, they bought all the stock from this distillery which did operate only uh, uh, for three years 2007 from to 2010 I need to do a full review about it. So uh, the the whole stock was uh, was bought um, by those guys from Bergslagen, uh, and uh, and they continue to release uh, every year or so since. This is uh, an eight years old, by the way. They continue to 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 release uh, bottlings. Uh, this is a full maturation Madeira cask. Uh, this is 53% ABV cask 249. This is stunning. This is almost uh, like I posted this uh, this year on Instagram, close uh, face to face to uh, Port Charlotte 16. Those two uh, are very close to a, a 30 years old Brora. Uh, of course, it's younger, but to the profile, I mean, of, of uh, an old Brora, but the Brora is 3,000 <laughs> euros, while well, this is around 100. This is 50 CL, mind you. Uh, and this is everything you want to get from a Madeira cask. This is absolutely gorgeous. This is also something that uh, has a lot of punch. It is still balanced, but it has a lot of character. Um, some other expressions with uh, sherry bourbon or other cask types there's some dirtiness uh, uh, that's uh, funkiness that reminds reminded me of uh, springbank that's why with frederick sometimes we speak about this as springbank of the north but for this expression i really thought about brora as a as a comparison right so quite a fantastic whiskey and i forgot to put the bottles on the table um, on the so you can see how it goes uh, third choice is something to mix and to be honest it's something I didn't mix a lot but I thought it could be good and okay uh, what's this noise um, price wise and it is no less than bullet 95 rye uh, this is 45 percent abv so 19 proof straight american rye whiskey it's around 30 euros it, it's 35 it's it's not expensive the juice uh, as we say uh, we old uh, old connoisseurs if i may say is from mgp uh, i love usually what mgp does mgp is a big big kind of industrial but very careful made uh, uh, whiskey in, in a distillery in Indiana, uh, in Lawrenceburg. And it is, uh, I don't 
know if there's other detailed yeah then they say it's bottled by the bullet distilling and company in louisville kentucky yeah but they ha they have the honesty to say uh it is it is from indiana yeah um MGP is, is so it's a big distillery Midwest grain uh, products that works uh, the, that sells distillate to a lot of distilleries in the, in the United States and even for some uh, others and uh, really uh, no I mean it's a complicated thing let's stick to the generalities so it provides a lot of, of, uh, of rye or, or bourbon to to uh, a lot of companies and uh, yeah this is very at uh, the beginning was a bit difficult it was close but it gained quality over there um, and really very nice very sweet super balanced and this will go to make things uh, as short as possible very well i think in a manhattan cocktail so that's my mix choice right Fourth category, Friday night pour. Friday night pour, uh, let's say uh, several times the week, sometimes one time or two times, I like to have a pitted whiskey in my glass. So why did I take? Of course, it's a bit of a, it's a collector's now, but uh, the, this expression still exists, of course, but my bottle is quite old, in 2008. Uh, fantastic year, uh, release, special release of La Cavalin. Lagavulin, uh, this one is 54, 56.4, sorry. Um, this is lovely, this is gorgeous. This has some depth. I believe there might be some older content in there. Uh, it's a thing they were used to do at the time, but I'm not sure they do it now. Uh, this is lovely, super balanced, p moderate peat. Uh, of course, at 56, it's a, a better experience, if I may say. Maybe less depth than the 16, but it's a better experience ABV wise. Uh, beautiful, beautiful uh, whiskey if you want something to have, uh, for instance, uh, near your chimney or with some uh, brochette or some um, barbecue, barbecue things. So beautiful. Uh, and we still have one, yes. Uh, so it's, you see, some nice bottles uh, this retails around a hundred or so now it's my only 12 years old special release I wish I had others um, uh, but I have a lot of whiskey so I can't complain for my now for my special occasion whiskey it's something I won't drink often because it's rare and also because I'm for those kinds of whiskey believe me or not I almost do not drink them myself or very rarely I am um, waiting for some guest and among the guests some who could be interested and educated enough to enjoy this and uh, this is the occasion where I can pull off some Ben Nevis 25 years old uh, Port Allen 33 years old um, Craig Lackey 35 years old stuff like that I might have shown you already but this I didn't show it I think a lot this is one of my two Rosebank. Uh, Rosebank is a lowland distillery. It was closed uh, until uh, f uh, yeah, two decades almost. One de yeah, two decades, uh, and it has been uh, reopened uh, last year or so. So it's gonna it's gonna produce again. It's on now. It used to be Diageo. Uh, now it's Ian uh, uh, McLeod Distillers. So it's uh, it's an indie bottler already has uh, Glen Goyne and Tamdu for instance and then they bought this beautiful uh, distillery Rosebank uh, so you can see the numbers here 17 years old it's uh, an exclusive store pick for La Maison du Whisky that I bought in 2008 this is also old 46% ABV non filtered non colored what do they say um, 199 bottles only and you have some other details here uh, yeah this is gorgeous if you like tea uh, if you like complexity in your profile uh, with floral uh, fruity 
um, herbal green and sweet spices elements this is for you of course gonna struggle to find it but um, it's a lowlander I, I could have picked a Glen Kinshi as well but I don't have high-end Glen Kinshi expressions uh, I have a blood noch 22 years old I could have shown you that uh, th in this category uh, I have a lot of things Balbrel 1991 was my last time's choice uh, also some cast strength Glen Murray could go well in that category right so there you have it for the first uh, classic challenge now stay tuned for the second one best uh, for this alternative list I picked up five categories which are completely different <laughs> sorry guys one is best value whiskey two is best blended whiskey with a uh, wide uh, exception so that means all kinds of blended not necessarily scotch as well third is most unusual whiskey fourth I pick most gourmet whiskey gourmand in French so bold a lot of uh, flavors five most complex whiskey and these are not the most complex the most gourmet most of everything but among my collection on a kind of not quick look but on a general look not going super in depth because they, I'm spoiled for choice I, I have the luck to collect for 20 plus 24 years so uh, even if a lot of things are gone or in small amounts um, I cannot show you for instance some bottles which are uh, the packaging is a bit remote and I only have samples so I picked a bottle uh, that you have already seen if you follow the channel but best value whiskey it's not a surprise it will not be a surprise uh, where is it yes it will not be a surprise if I show you this I'm sorry to uh, do like uh, last year um, but it's it's a gorgeous whiskey for 35 euros or so here uh, you have the most balance uh, probably Isla uh, entry level Isla uh, of the market and you have a treat 43% ABV it's a treat it, it's maritime it's it's uh, smoky but moderately it's a nice complexity in the peat it's an easy drinker as well it's a fantastic value in my opinion so Kulila 12 we're in Isla Scotland for the second choice we're going to another continent and we, you might be surprised and again disclaimer I should have done before some of the bottles are not bottles you're gonna find easily but I have to illustrate this I'm sorry second choice yeah there you have it this is a masterpiece this is one of the best blended whiskies in the world in my opinion I uh, don't have the rate in mind but it's somewhere around 94 uh, points uh, it's fantastic it's a mix of 18 years old Weisers and Lot 40 and other whiskies this is a uh, bottled if I'm not mistaken 46.1 uh, the, I love the packaging as well this is gorgeous one of the most subtle rye forward whiskies I ever come across one of the most complex as well I could have been picked for the last category most complex by the way uh, but yeah it's it's a it's a work of art it's a work of high level craft so kudos to Don if you watch this so this is my second choice and this is uh, the I mean the first choice in the best blended whiskey category third category it's something that you might uh, struggle to find but it's not a question here I think it's more to uh, discover things this is a German whiskey this is not a barley whiskey made this is not made of corn this is not made of rye this is not made of a uh, oat of millet of buckwheat or anything else I could have picked buckwheat this is made from spelt in English epotre in French uh, 
uh, Dinkel in German, Schwabischer whiskey, that means it's from uh, the uh, Swab in French culture, Southwest Germany, I, I uh, understood. So it's, uh, it's a dialect, the Swab, uh, Schwab uh, dialect from the um, Southwest of Germany. This is less uh, surprising than I thought. It was a gift uh, from the Bosch Bosch Elder Brand Company, who do also does liqueurs and other things, like many distilleries in uh, east of France and Germany. They do other things than whiskey. Uh, this is only a 20 CL. I don't know if there's a big bottle with that, 40%. This is nice, nice estuary profile. Some cereals, of course, forward, but this is uh, this is probably the most unusual, indeed, uh, whiskey I have in my collection, along with probably the uh, dry fly trick triticel, which mixes uh, wheat with uh, rye. Hybrid cereal profile. I think. And of course there was my whiskey, but I'm not here to advertise it every second, so uh, because it was a combination of acacia and oak cask and also for the content. Fourth category is most gourmet whiskey. I was spoiled for choice again in that category, but I had to show you one of my favorite Springbank, of course, uh, that I reviewed, so you can head over to my YouTube um, video about this uh, and uh, another uh, Hazelburn, also Barolo. Uh, Barolo is a, is a red wine from Italy. It, it doesn't come across at all as winey. That's also why I love it. It comes across as a liquid pastry, so all kinds of things. Go to see the review. I think it's one of the videos where I take uh, most pleasure doing it. So I uh, recommend you watching this. This is nine years old. Uh, this was uh, uh, matured four years in ex bourbon. Um, it does say it all here. Matured four years in refill bourbon cask, five years in fresh. Gaja must be the brand, I think. Barolo uh, is the type of wine. Cask distilled February 2004, bottled um, October 2013, 11,000 bottles, 54.7 ABV. This is a masterpiece. This is, I think, it was also, I did also rate it over to 94, I think. Right. Stunning stuff. No less than that. There you have a second rank of beautiful bottles, I have to say. Now, last but not least category, most complex whiskey. Yeah. I have to pull out this, which come in that beautiful box, even if it's not practical. Go to see the video about Yoichi. There's not enough views uh, for uh, things. You can see some rarities like this and another one as well. Uh, 25 years old. French exclusive again, La Maison du Whisky store pick. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it was distilled in 1988, bottled 2013, single cast 100 2015, uh, warehouse 25 and 62% ABV. Uh, this was matured in a new virgin oak butt, so around 500, if I'm not mistaken, or liters. This is not your regular virgin oak cask, let me tell you. This is exceptional quality cask to handle this beautiful distillate of my favorite active distillery uh, until Port Ellen will be reactivated. Um, this is phenomenal for me. I did count 39 different uh, flavors in there on the palette. Uh, so you'll go check out my website or uh, my video and you will learn all about them. This is a, a masterpiece. This is not for everyone. This is heavily pitted, but it's so old and so well done that uh, it doesn't come across as over aggressive, even at 62%. Uh, I cannot say enough things about it. So, yeah, there you have it, a double challenge. Uh, 
about the first challenge I had to nominate someone so I will nominate Jim from Whiskey Novice but if he prefers to do the second version it's free to him uh, otherwise for the second version everyone can take the categories and please uh, send me uh, the link and tell me you done the second challenge I will be very pleased thank you for watching see you soon bye bye